beautiful morning and uh, we're going to get those uh, heat exchangers off today so I can take them home, clean them up and uh, pressure test them. Okay, we're gonna start off by uh, draining these reserve tanks because uh, they gotta come off first. And then uh, the straps, the hoses, and try to catch as much of the antifreeze as I can. Okay, so I took off the uh, the bottom drain plug here and drained it uh, into this funnel and then into the bucket and then used the uh, sucker thing to suck the fluid into the container over here. Um, the interesting thing about these hoses though, the raw water hoses, this is a raw water outlet, this is a raw water outlet, um, and this is a raw water inlet, all those hoses popped off just fine, no problem. Um, which I expected them to be more of a problem because they are raw water. Uh, the fresh water one, which is this one, and then there's one underneath the uh, exchanger. Um, this one is really messed up. It's just going to be a real pain in the butt to get off. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to replace this piece of rubber, which I've been kind of dreading. Okay, so after a lot of coercing, I was able to get this uh, thermostat housing to come out. Thermostat's up there. Okay, so um, all the hoses are off. The other um, freshwater hose on, on the bottom of the exchanger is off. And the uh, bands are off. This is duct tape to uh, insulate the isolator from the bands and from the uh, mounts. So, originally these were rubber, but last time we did this, we didn't have any rubber straps to put back on there. So now it's just a matter of lifting this thing up and uh, taking it off. Well, it's stuck, <laughs> of course. It's stuck to the mounts. So that's going to be a big pain in the butt. Okay, it's out. It really wasn't that heavy. And uh, it wasn't that stuck either. I gave it a little tap with the BFH and uh, it came right up. I'm going to take these end cap caps off here in a second. These are the mounts. I'm um, going to clean those up uh, before this thing goes back on. And this little wire down here, I don't know if you remember on a previous video, this is that bonding wire for the exchanger. And luckily it worked because this thing's got paint on it. So it was it was working. So this thing's going to go home, get a good clean, but uh, right now I'm going to take these uh, cap gaskets off. Let's take a look and see what's inside there. Okay, well this is the top of the exchanger. Okay, this is the bottom. And you can see the top's got a lot more uh, corrosion and stuff. Now it's been over a year since I've done my raw water flush which would have taken out probably a majority of this stuff but a lot of the tubes um, appear pretty clear but um, you can see 10% of them are probably clogged up something like that so good okay now I'm gonna rant I bought this uh, two gallon bucket at Lowe's and when I did, I bought this white lid that was right next to it, assuming that this lid would go on this bucket. I have hammered on this thing. I have done everything I possibly could to get that seal to seal, and it is not sealing. Just freaking pissing me off. And, I mean, look at the wonderfulness we got inside here. Yeah, we want some of that, don't we? Made in the USA right there. 
rant over. Cleaning up the uh, lids here a little bit. It's the next day and um, we're going to get that uh, starboard side uh, heat exchanger off. I couldn't get it off yesterday. I was just too burned out. Getting old. <clears throat> Not enough exercise. Can't go diving. Um, so we're going to do that real quick and then I'm going to take that back home and clean it up like I did the uh, port side one. And then uh, I'm going to give them an acid bath and after the pressure testing if it's uh, okay which I'm sure it will be um, we'll give them a paint job which reminds me I gotta take the paint home with me today okay we're working away on the starboard exchanger here got the uh, raw water um, hoses off and this one the uh, thermostat housing it came off super easy on this side where on the other side it was just such a pain now I've ordered new uh, hoses right here. This little thing is a two and a quarter inch hose, which is a little unusual. I managed to strip the bottom of this drain plug, so instead of draining fluid from here like I did on the other side, I actually had to drain fluid from the um, exhaust manifold plug right here. And of course that resulted in a mess. So I have a lot of cleanup to do. This bottom radiator hose is the last one I need to take off and it's going to be a pain in the butt. <laughs> like I thought, that lower hose is just really being a pain. It's taking it out of me. I just can't get it to break loose. There's no good angles on it to uh, actually knock it out. But uh, keep trying. Take this gasket off. Well, this one looks quite a bit better, doesn't it? This one doesn't nearly have as much corrosion up at the top. This is the top of the exchanger here. So the other one, I don't know if you remember, had a lot of corrosion up there. This one looks pretty good. And so, cool. All right. The... Um, starboard exchanger is at the uh, radiator shop getting a new uh, plug um, brazed onto it. It uh, <coughs> the, pro the 
plug had gotten stuck, I tried to use an extractor to get it out, um, and it broke the actual plug uh, female portion off. So I took it to the uh, radiator shop to have a new female portion brazed on there, and I'll be getting that back on Tuesday. So I've got my little pressure testing set up here. Um, I went to Home Depot and got these plugs. And they're a little small, so I wrapped some electrical tape around them and uh, snugged them down, and they seem to be okay. This is just a standard uh, air inlet nipple. Uh, luckily, it goes right into my uh, quarter-inch pipe thread here we have. And then I put some uh, Teflon tape on it. And this gauge here is a low pressure gauge from um, Harbor Freight. It's a vacuum, uh, vacuum and pressure gauge. And um, it came with uh, some brass fittings here. And uh, the collar fitting here goes right into this uh, quarter inch pipe again. So again, I put some um, Teflon tape in there on both of these fittings. And then th these are just a nipple barb, a nipple barb. So let's go ahead and pump this thing up. Then I got a little air compressor here. This is also a Harbor Freight special. So let's pump this up to five pounds. Thing's still leaking a little bit. Let's see if I can get this to. Nope. This just will not do it. Okay, let's try this one more time. This thing keeps leaking. So. I just put my ear to this. It's not leaking. This one seems to be pretty good. It's not leaking at all. Okay, so that's about 10 minutes. Uh, hasn't moved, so I'm going to call this good. All right. Okay, uh, getting ready to uh, do the muratic acid wash for these heat exchangers. Got a couple of things here. Got uh, the bucket that the acid's going to go in, the acid, some gloves, the chemical rated gloves, and uh, a hose here so that I can rinse it off as soon as they come out of there. So I'm going to put the acid in the bucket and then put the exchangers, which are sitting over there, um, one side in for two minutes, flip it around one side in or the other side in for a couple minutes and pull them off lay them down here or lay lay one down here rinse it off thoroughly and then do the same thing with the other one let's see how this goes one of the problems here is I use my wife's gloves and of course they don't fit my hands so when you're doing this make sure you get the uh, right size gloves <laughs> Okay, things are going pretty good. I've uh, done both sides of this one. And um, I only put it in for a couple of minutes. But it did bubble up quite a bit. And uh, you can see it's not 100% clean there. Here, this one just went in. And uh, it's bubbling up pretty good. I've only done the one side, so i got to flip it over here. So, so far, so good. The white stuff on the end of one of them is old zinc and that's probably going to go away over time but uh, the acid isn't going to take that out 
Um, I got one acid splash on my thumb, so that's not too good. It doesn't hurt yet, <laughs> but I need to uh, take care of it. So um, they both both the exchangers look really good, and even the radiator shop guy said that hey, you know, these exchangers look really good. He only saw the one, but uh, he said it looked really really good. So this is the repair that uh, he did for me. It had um, the old one that looked kind of like this had had snapped off. So I ground it down and put a uh, quarter inch uh, pipe um, female fitting there for me and brazed it in. So that's going to be fine. Okay, so this is the starboard side exchanger. Got the pressure testing going. And um, I filled it up to just above uh, five pounds and uh, it's holding. So, looks good. I didn't think I'd have any problems with the exchangers. Uh, they're pretty bulletproof. And now they're clean. So now it's just a matter of uh, masking and painting. I got to do a little touch up on the paint. Um, there were some areas that I probably should have sanded a little bit better. But uh, otherwise, uh, it's all they're all ready to go. I just need to tighten up the uh, plugs and put the end cap gaskets on and uh, install them. All right, it's time to put these bad boys on. This is going to take a while. This time we have the rubber straps. No more duct tape. This one goes on uh, the exchanger and these two go into the uh, holder. Okay, we're making some progress. The top portions of these guys are done. I just have the lower hoses on both of them to put on and snug up. Hey, that's going to wrap up the exchangers, so I uh, hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, please leave a like, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'm going to be doing some more videos, so hope you can uh, follow along. All right, take care. This stuff's all going to get used up tomorrow.